endotherms, a species of living things that existence sparked unimaginable questions. It is an animal that can control its internal body temperature, a freak in nowadays society. In today's episode, we explore how endotherms control their body temperature, something so amazing that we can't even begin to comprehend any other creatures doing it. Planet Earth, a planet of endotherms. In today's episode, we will discuss how endotherms decide how to regulate their body temperature. In humans and other animals, the core body temperature is monitored by a part of the brain called the thermoregulatory center. This is known as thermoregulation. It is located in the hypothalamus of the brain and it acts as the sort of um, temperature thing in the brain. If a person goes into a warm or cold environment, the first thing that happens is that temperature receptors in the skin send electrical impulses to the hypothalamus, which stimulates the brain to alter our behaviour. We start to feel hot or cold and usually do something about it, such as finding shade or having a cold drink. This is to make sure that our temperature stays in a good enough environment so that we don't get too hot or too cold. If changes to our behaviour are not enough to keep our body temperature constant, the thermoregulatory centre in the hypothalamus detects a change in the temperature of the blood flowing through it. It then sends, ni- it then sends f- signals via nerves to other organs of the body, which regulate the temperature by physiological means. If the central core body temperature rises, the, sl- the sweat glands produce greater amounts of sweat. This liquid is secreted onto the surface of the skin. When a liquid evaporates, it turns into a gas. This change needs energy, called the latent heat of vaporization. When sweat evaporates, the energy is supplied by the body's heat, cooling the body down. It is not that the sweat is cool, it is secreted at body temperature. It only has a cooling action when it evaporates. In very humid atmospheres, like a tropical forest or tropical rainforest, the sweat stays on the skin and doesn't evaporate. It then has very little cooling effect. However, when there is a heat loss, shivering shivering also takes place. This is where the muscles contract and relax rapidly. This also generates a large amount of heat. Another way of cooling yourself down is vasoconstriction. This is where, in cold conditions, the arterioles leading to the surface capillary loops constrict or become narrower, and blood flow to the surface of the skin is reduced, so that less heat is lost. Vasoconstriction and vasodilation vasodilation are completely different things, but are brought about by tiny rings of muscle in the walls of the arterioles, called sphincter muscles, which you can see in the picture there. Vasodilation is where there are tiny blood vessels called capillary loops in the dermis. Blood flows through these loops, radiating heat to the outside and cooling the body down. If the body is too hot, small arteries leading to the capillary loops dilate or widen. This increases the blood flow to the skin's surface. The movement on hairs of the skin's surface is a way of cooling yourself down, but also a way of making yourself more warm. This is because of the relaxation of tiny muscles, muscles called hair erector muscles attached to the base of each hair. In cold conditions, these contract and the hairs are pulled upright. The hairs trap a layer of air next to the skin, and since air is a poor conductor of heat, which acts as an insulator. In warm conditions, however, the thinner layer of trapped air means that more heat will be lost. This is not very effective in humans, because the hairs over most of our body do not grow very large. It is very very effective in hairy animals, like mad cats or dogs. The same principles used by birds which fluff out their feathers in cold. So I hope you now understand how endotherms control their body temperature. And I hope you enjoyed this. See you next time where I, Professor Igor Dani, will explain explain other stuff like how the world turns on its head and how people eat meat. Thank you.